What's up, scholars? Welcome back to another video. <laughs> Today, we are doing another One Piece review. I am doing from chapters 1058 to 1065. It is a much smaller chunk of chapters than I usually do for reviews, but there is a reason I did it, because these chapters were absolutely bonkers. Like, just ridiculous with the amount of information that was dropped, the plot being moved in so many different ways, so many things being set up, big reveals, I, I, big reveals. These chapters were a lot for me. I'm, I'm shook. And, um, there's gonna be a lot of lore coming soon. I just know it. I know it. We're gonna get lore. We're gonna get backstories. And I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready for any of them. Oh my goodness. I'm not ready. I finished chapter 1065 today. And my mind is reeling. And I'm just, I not, I'm not well. I am not well right now, but it's fine. Okay. Let's talk about this, this chunk of chapters. These are eight chapters. Let's talk about these eight chapters because they covered a lot, a lot of information. We start off with our crew getting new bounties. They've left Wano and their new bounties have been revealed and all of their bounties have gone up. So Shoppers has gone up to a thousand. You have Nami at 366 million. Brooke is 383 million. And Frankie has 394 million. Usopp is 500 million Barrett, which is ridiculous. I love it. Robbins is up to 930 million. And then you get, oh my gosh, you have Sanji has 1.032 billion bout. It's a, oh, Sanji's is a 1.032 billion berry bounty. Jimbe is a 1.1 billion bounty. And Zoro is a 1.111 billion berry bounty. And then Luffy is just casually at 3 billion berry bounty. It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. All their bounties are so high now, save for Chopper's, but that's fine. We love Chopper. He's, he's, he's best boy. He's so sweet. All of their bounties are ridiculous now. It's insane. And it's just a show of how much they've grown and where they've started to where they are now. Absolutely insane. The biggest part of this is not of their bounties, it's <laughs> it's the information we get about the Cross Guild. Because we heard about the Cross Guild when we were leaving Wano, uh, but now we get the story behind the Cross Guild where um, Mihawk and Crocodile are not thrilled with Buggy. <laughs> Buggy has lucked himself and finagled himself in a position of power to where he is the face of the cross guild and everybody thinks Crocodile and Mihawk work for him. <laughs> Through a series of unfortunate events where Crocodile came and saved Buggy from the Navy, mainly because Crocodile knew Buggy was gonna run and he wanted his money that Buggy owed him. And Buggy was just like, listen, I'll work for you instead. But then it got switched around because of Buggy's followers to where it was like, oh, Crocodile saved Buggy, Crocodile works for Buggy, and Mihawk kind of got drawn into that as well, and they're not happy with him. But they're just like, you know what, we'll let you pretend to be the one in charge because it puts a bigger target on your back, and we're free to do more of what we want to do. But yeah, sure, we're all in a guild together. <laughs> It's so, it's so funny and ironic that Buggy is seen as like this mastermind and again, his luck has just landed him another position of power with these two very powerful people beside him. And I, I love it. I love our king 
who continues to fail upwards and he has made it to the top. He is now an emperor. He's made it to the top. He's up there. It's hilarious. You have the revolutionary army kind of grappling with this news because they're being told Sabo has killed King Cobra from Alabasta. It's not what happened. Uh, <laughs> But Dragon is like, if he did, he's going to have to reckon with me for it, which, Dragon, I want to see you fight. I think we're finally getting, like, a lead up to him actually getting to fight. Not Sabo, of course, but, like, things are leading to a certain direction, and I'm really excited but nervous about it. But Dragon is talking to the pacifista Kuma, the original one that they had got from uh, the Reverie, I guess, saved from that place. And Dragon is asking Kuma to tell him everything, tell him everything that he has seen. And as that is happening, Koala gets a call from Sabo, but it cuts off there for just a moment. Because we get a flashback of both Marco, one, not joining Shanks' crew, and kind of being this free agent kind of floating around. I wonder what his role is going to be, where he's going to end up playing in all of this. Because he's close with Luffy. He told Luffy how proud that Ace would have been and how strong he's gotten, which is so sweet. We have him leaving. We have Yamato staying behind on Wano to defend Wano which I think is a good idea because Wano is very vulnerable at the moment because Kaido did fall and yes Luffy is kind of over Wano in a sense he's put his flag there to say that hey no this is my territory now too but there's a lot of other people who are who would want to go to Wano to attack so I think it is a good idea that Yamato stay behind she's gonna be great there I think that was the best decision she could have made at the time but it doesn't end there. <laughs> it's just starting. The the amount that's <laughs> it's it's there's just no stop. It was just like we left Wano and Oda was like, "All right, we're gonna go from a hundred to a thousand. Let's just go," and he did. And it's insane because it's like as this is happening, oh, we're getting this nice little farewell, ha ha ha, and then oh. The Navy's attacking um, Amazon Lily, which we knew beforehand because Kobe was on his way to Amazon Lily. But it's not just, you know, the Navy casually attacking uh, Amazon Lily. They brought these new pacifistas along with them that are called Seraphim, which <laughs> I... Seraphim are like known to be like angels and this whole land of the gods and... I'm, I've got theories. I've got so many theories. And the fact that the Seraphim Pacifista that happens to go to Amazon Lily looks like a child version of Boa. But with the, um, with the Lunarian, like King, with the darker skin and the white hair, I've got theories. <laughs> But, it's not just them attacking Amazon Lily. Blackbeard is on Amazon Lily, and he's wanting Boa's powers. He wants to take Boa's f powers from her. Which, if he's wanting to gain all these powers, okay, what is, what is he, can, okay, okay. Blackbeard is planning something because of the people we've seen him go after. I he's up to something I'm gonna talk about it in just a second but Blackbeard's after Boa's power Boa is not backing down she is holding her own and good for her she's doing great but he's got her in a chokehold until um <laughs> Rayleigh shows up and he's just like yo knock it off I'm sorry <laughs> what is going on there's so much happening here Rayleigh shows up on Amazon Lily and is just like, yo, Blackbeard, I've never liked you. It's time for you to go. And Blackbeard doesn't want the smoke with Rayleigh, which, you know, smart on him. He leaves, but he kidnaps 
Kobe. He takes Kobe. With, why is he taking Kobe? Is he going to use Kobe as a bartering chip for the Navy? Is he just, how is, it's, I'm, uh, why? Kobe's done nothing wrong. <laughs> is he Kobe of all people, why Kobe? Is it, is it just, is it because, does he know about, like, Kobe and Luffy's friendship? I, I don't know, but, like, would he use Kobe to draw Luffy? I mean, there's so much other people that he could have used to draw Luffy out, but why, why Kobe? Why is he taking Kobe? What does this mean? What does Blackbeard want with Kobe? Kobe doesn't have any double fruit powers. He's got really good hockey, but, I mean, he's Navy commander, but, like, why? Why was he on your list of people to take? Or was it like a whim of, oh, well, I couldn't get Boa, so I'm going to get Kobe? I don't understand. I don't understand. Why Kobe? <laughs> These eight chapters have stressed me out so much because of how much was happening, how much got developed, everything, all the twists and turns and everything that, that's been going on. It's got me, like, stressed where I'm, like, laughing about it, but it's, I'm, I'm really concerned. <laughs> about what's happening. Blackbeard, from what I understand, he did not get Boa's powers, which is good. He got Kobe, but Boa remains holding her devil fruit, still. But they're thinking that the Seraphim are replacement for the Warlords, which is interesting because of everything we know about the Pacifistas and Kuma. <laughs> Got some questions. But if if my theory is correct, this is gonna be trouble. Because the two seraphim we have seen so far is a little one that looks like Boa and a little one that looks like Jimbe. Were these new seraphim pacifistas like, modeled after the Seven Warlords, which means we get a Dofi look-alike, and a Mihawk look-alike, and a, possibly a Crocodile look-alike, and, and more. We can have their look-alikes, but if they're created after the Lunarians, then they have powers like King did. curious. It's curious. I want to know more. However, that's all we get from Boa. She is safe as of right now. But we get back to our crew and they've learned because they're reading the newspaper. Uh, Robin is reading everything out. They learned that Sabo has apparently killed King Cobra and they're all in a riot over it because they're like, no, Sabo wouldn't do this. Luffy is having an absolute fit over it. He's like, Sabo would never do something like that. They're all worried about Vivi because Vivi has still been captured and we have not seen her or heard from her in too long. I'm getting a little worried about Vivi. <laughs> what does Ibu want with Vivi? I know Ibu has her. I know Ibu has her. And is Cobra really dead or... It, is Cobra really dead or was like that like just a farce completely or is he really dead but did Emu kill him because he was trying to protect Vivi and then he it's besides the point right now but yes they're all adamant about one Sabo not killing King Cobra and then two uh, they're all up in arms about Vivi like they're wanting to go to Mary Joa <laughs> to get Vivi back they're all worried about her, and Zoro ends up being the one that's saying, like, no, we're not going there, because he's like, that, that's, like, home base for the Navy and the world government. Like, do you really think we need to be going there right now? And Zoro ends up trying to talk some sense into Luffy by saying, remember what you said when this happened to Ace? And Luffy's face when Zoro's trying to use logic with him is so funny because he looks so upset, so offended that how dare Zoro try to use this logic with him right now. And it says, until he was in undeniable danger, you, you, let, you let Ace live his own life. 
Not that that ended well, but maybe that's why Luffy wants to act now, Zoro, because the last time it didn't end well. Did you ever think of that? But uh, Luffy does not take this very well, and they all start calling Zoro names. And of course, Zoro and Sanji start bickering, and they start fighting again. They figure out about the cross guild and <laughs> I love Luffy when he hears that Buggy's the mastermind. He's like, now that's just a mistake. And it's like, yes it is, but it's not. <laughs> and I love that Luffy trusts Robin to let him know the important parts. She's like, do you want me to tell you everything? He's like, oh, I'll just leave it to you. Tell me if it's something I need to know. And she's like, will do. I, I love it. I love the trust that Luffy has in Robin and... I, I don't know. I, I, I just loved that part for them. And then, as Luffy just casually lays down on the ship, he drops his real dream that, of course, we don't hear. He tells his real dream to his crew. After all this time, he finally tells them. And all of their reactions are so unique. Some of them are laughing. Some of them are shocked, and some of them are just like, oh, well, that sounds like you. The, the mixture of reactions makes me really curious about what Luffy said, what his real dream is. I've got my ideas on it. I've got my theories. I know people, are, I know it's said to be a childish dream, but there are many things that can be classified as childish that are still very broad or very massive. Like... It's got some ideas on that. I'm gonna have to think about it a little bit more. I've always I've I've thought it has something to do with freedom, but I think it goes a little further than that. Maybe. But the way Robin looks at him is what really catches my eye. The way Robin looks at Luffy whenever he says it makes me think it's more than just a childish dream or anything like that. Keeping my eye on it, I'm so upset. Of course they're not going to tell us, but still, like, I wanted to know. But then we get back to Sabo, who is making a call from a kingdom called Lulusai, which is one of the eight that revolted the other day, I guess at the Reverie. So Sabo's been hiding there, and he makes a call to Koala, and we just happen to see, oh, the Navy's trying to scramble to get the signal. They're trying to figure out where he's calling from. Oh, they get the signal. They're going to listen in on this conversation until um, the five elders figure out, oh, he's calling from this place. Mm, we can't have that happen. And then we see Emu just walking in the background. And Sabo is in a panic because I was right. I was right. He did see Emu. He met e he 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 knows Emu. He knows about Emu. Emu must know about him because of the actions she takes against him. I did did Sabo see Emu take BB and then he ran. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think Sabo's dead. He's 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 alive. I he's alive. He's alive. He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. <laughs> okay. Focus. Sabo was telling Koala that he did not kill Cobra. That was not him. And as Sabo is speaking over the phone, the sky is growing dark, Emu is looking creepy as ever. Finally see both of Emu's eyes. It's just as scary as when you only had one eye. But he's trying to say that the empty throne that was supposed to remain empty is actually not empty. And then, boom, communications get shut off and the world government, the elders interfere and be like, oh, communication center, hey, you didn't hear anything today. You received no communications from, from this kingdom today. Because this kingdom never existed in the first place. 
gaslighting the communication center and covering up the entire incident at Lulu Sai because Emu over here, I guess it's Emu, I'm, I'm assuming it's Emu, there's this shadow that appears in the sky above the kingdom and when they say the kingdom never existed, this monstrous like attack rains from the sky and like demolishes this kingdom? I... The cover up. The fact that when we were in the reverie and we were introduced to Emu and the five elders said, whoever you want, like name who you want stricken, and then boom, we, we're seeing it happen. We're seeing the cover ups happen, the erasure of history and kingdoms happening again. And Sabo was about to expose them, so of course they were rushing to cover it up. Of course they would say, you didn't see anything, you didn't hear anything, you didn't intercept anything. This place never existed in the first place. Ignore all of it. I, <laughs> I have, is that Emu's power? Was that Emu's power that struck Lulu's side? Or was it something else? Was it the five elders? Was it a weapon? Was it a weapon from 900 years ago? Perhaps revived by Vegapunk? <laughs> there's, there's so much. Because, because, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. We see Cypher Pole with um, what's his name? Luchi and Kaku and Stussy, they're all going to Egghead on orders to eliminate Vegapunk. And the, the Luchi is like, oh, is this related to the Lulu Sai incident? And Stussy's like, you better not ask any questions. I mean, they're wanting to cover up everything Vegapunk has done now. They're trying to eliminate all of Vegapunk, all of the Vegapunks, but keeping his lab intact, keeping his creations intact. But they need to eliminate Vegapunk. Why? Because of something he created, because of something he's done. And we know that Vegapunk is in communication with Dragon because Vegapunk is a genius. He's like, hey, I have a feeling I'm about to bite the dust because they're going to come kill me. And he's t telling all of this to Dragon. He's talking to Dragon. So I... <laughs> There's so many moving pieces right now. And it's hurting my brain. The world government's making moves. Like they made one against Lulu Sai because Sabo was trying to give information that he shouldn't have. He should have. I don't know what he should have done. I think he's alive. I don't know how, but he's alive. He's he's definitely not dead. No, nope. not even gonna entertain the thought. No, he's still alive. But the government is prepping to make a massive move. If they're getting rid of Vegapunk, something huge is about to happen. They are planning something, and. As <laughs> so what's happening? So while that's going on, you have these straw hats ending up saving Bonnie from this shark thing. That's like a massive shark creation thingy. They save Bonnie from this giant like metal mechanical shark, and they end up all getting split up. Of course, <laughs> we got Helmeppo with Toshigi and a uh, smoker and this other guy what what's his name Prince Gruz begging for help to get Kobe back and they're not wanting to go against black or go to Blackbeard's island to fight him Toshigi is taking care of the kids and they're doing a lot better from Punk Hazard I really love seeing that those really sweet detail kind of thrown in there however Hamepo is begging for Kobe's life pretty much at this point, and they're not wanting to get Kobe back. We get back to Luffy. Luffy is with Bonnie and Jimbe and, and Chopper. It's just those four. Those are the ones that ended up together. And 
as Bonnie is talking about Luffy's wanted poster, it's so funny when he's talking about Gear 5. She's like, well, what is this? Like, what, you're like your hair is all white. Like, what is this? And Luffy says, oh, that's what I'm like when I'm free. I mean, come on. But they all end up on Egghead, this futuristic island that Vegapunk created. Robin and Zoro, Sanji, Nami, um, Brooke and Frankie and Usopp all end up, they're still on the ship, they end up being saved by this giant robot and out pops Dr. Vegapunk. But it's not Dr. Vegapunk, it's one of his mini, mini-me's creation Vegapunks. There's like six of them and it's just one of them. The, the whole idea of there being like seven Vegapunks and there's only one original one, it's, it gets a little confusing, but we're fine. It's fine. But as this um, Lilith, I think is her name, Lilith is trying to take advantage of the Straw Hats because she's like, oh, without their captain, they're nothing. And someone over the phone is like, no, you've severely esti underestimated them. <laughs> look at the Pirate Hunter and look at... Um, Robin and both of them they were so ready they were like ready for demon time they were so ready to take her out it was so funny it's just like no look at them they're ready to fight they will take you down <laughs> and then Zoro's just like hey Vegapunk we've got some demands that you're gonna meet and then one of the other Vegapunks Shaka the Good says fine bring him in I have some interest in you anyways have anything to do with Vegapunk knowing that he's about to be killed and maybe he's going to pass some things down to the Straw Hats because maybe he's interested in Luffy after knowing who Luffy is because Luffy is Joy Boy and maybe he's like hmm maybe I could do something with this because of the place he's in <sighs> thoughts many many thoughts and then yeah Bonnie just casually we just casually figure out that Bonnie's father is Kuma which, again, I had a theory on that when we were in the reverie and we saw her and Kuma, like her going after Kuma. That was one of my theories, was that they were related, like he could be her father. I wasn't sure how that was possible. Oh my gosh. Kuma is Bonnie's dad. My brain hurts from all of this, guys. Like, there's so much, so much happening. Oda's not stopping. But we get on Egghead, and we're introduced to a lot of the technologies on Egghead from the, like, mirages and holograms to the vending machines and all the different things where you can get your own clothes. We all get new fits. It's so funny. I like, I like Luffy's fit. They all look so good. Um, but I love when they're, like, hologram food and they can't eat. Luffy gets so mad that he's like turning into like one of his gears unintentionally. It's just like a fire ring around him. It's so funny because he's wanting food so bad. That's besides the point. I just love that panel. I thought it was really funny. But they need another Dr. Vegapunk, another model of him that feeds them and then leaves and then they end up getting attacked by uh, Kuma the pacifista, the policeman version because they didn't pay for anything they ate or the clothes. So he starts attacking. Bonnie, of course, is begging Luffy not to attack because she that's her father, so of course she's not going to want to attack any version of him. Luffy, knowing that it's a pacifista, has to protect Bonnie because he's like, no, like that's, that's not your actual dad. That's just a pacifista. That's just a version of him. That's not him. Because just the the panel where Bonnie is crying out for them not to hurt her dad. Oh yeah, and speaking of like Kumas and pacifistas, Cypher Pole, they're supposed to drop off another t sort of Kuma pacifista on Egghead. Is it a bomb? I don't know. I don't know. The, uh, but no, it can't be a bomb because they're supposed to preserve the lab, so that's not going to work. I don't know. I don't know. But we are taken away from Egghead yet again to see female law, <laughs> which I was not expecting, because Blackbeard's crew has a feminization disease, which could mess people. That's just weird. That's not nice at all. 
Um, Law is able to break through the disease with his hockey. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that at all. He's able to break through, and he's fine. He's he's back to normal. And he is going up against Blackbeard, which is not on my 2024 bingo card, okay? I Nothing can happen to Law. Blackbeard is going after Law because I am assuming he wants Law's powers because Law has incredible devil fruit powers right up Blackbeard's alley. But also, their fight, first of all, Law's crew is really showing out because we haven't really seen them fight all that much and we finally get to and they're doing a really good job protecting Law and fighting back against Blackbeard's crew. He's actually causing, they're actually causing a lot of damage to them. And then Law is going off against Blackbeard and Blackbeard is not prepared for all the tricks Law has up his sleeve and he stabs Blackbeard through the stomach which how is Blackbeard still alive after that? I don't know but it's fine. It's fine. Um, but they're still fighting because Blackbeard doesn't want to quit but <laughs> Blackbeard's kidnapped Pudding? He has Pudding? Is it because, like, we, like, Kaido and Big Mom were talking about, like, if her third eye can awaken, she can read the Ponyglyphs or, or something like that? He wants her to read the Ponyglyphs? Or is it something else with her, like, I, mm. well, How did he get Pudding, first of all? I know there were some cover, sorting, cover stories that would probably answer that question for me, but if y'all could just tell me how, because when I'm caught up in reading the story I don't always pay close attention to the cover stories I know I need to and I I saw one cover story I think I saw Aokiji and Pudding like chained up and Aokiji is working with Blackbeard if I remember correctly so that would that would line up that is that how it happened I still don't know why Alkaji is doing this because it makes no sense. Why isn't he with us? That would be a lot better of a choice for him, at least in my opinion. But so that just at the Blackbeard took Whitebeard's power. He went after Boa because he wanted Boa's power. He has Kobe. He has Pudding, and now he's after Law, because I presume he wants Law's power, probably for the same reason Doflamingo wanted Law's power, for that um, ultimate technique to make someone immortal. Um, and we don't get to see the conclusion of that fight, which worries me, because we didn't see the conclusion of Blackbeard and Ace's fight, and we know how that turned out. Nothing Nothing can happen to Law. I'm sorry. I mean, Law looks like he had the upper hand in that fight. He was doing a lot more damage to Blackbeard than Blackbeard was to him. He looks like he had the upper hand, but there's the one panel at the very end where Blackbeard was holding up his fist. Or his hand, not his fist, his hand. I... Law can't lose his powers. He can't. He can't lose his powers. I'm so nervous. I'm so scared for a lot. No, I can't. <sighs> Nothing can happen to him. There are certain characters in this series that I just, nothing can happen to, and he's one of them, and I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. But we don't get to see that. We see um, a Kainu. And kind of saying, like, why did nobody tell me being Fleet Admiral would be so frustrating because they can't do anything? And it's like, well, I honestly don't feel bad for him. But he hasn't really done anything, truly. I think Blackbeard's... Blackbeard is either plotting something to go after the One Piece, plotting something... Because we don't know what Blackbeard's dream is. We don't know what Blackbeard's dream is. He's been big on dreams, just like Luffy has, all the way back when we met him in Skypiea when he said people's dreams never end. We don't know Blackbeard's dream, but he's been very greedy. He wants more. It's just what more does he want? Is he looking for, like, more power? Is he looking for more of a strategic thing to go against the government, to go against all the other pirates, to go against 
something? Does he want the one piece? Is he even interested in that? What does he want? And why... Why is he going after these certain people? That's what I want to know. But we get back to Luffy, and Bonnie has aged them all. Luffy's a 70-year-old man. Jinbei's a child, along with her, and Chopper's an old reindeer. Uh, it's a very comical picture, but they're all hiding together from Kuma. And as Jinbei's talking, we get all of these things that Kuma is said to be. This tyrant, this person who was a king and then was driven out of his kingdom, worked for the Revolutionary Army until he was offered this position by the government, took it, became a warlord while these experiments were going on, and then things went bad from there. Bonnie said, but being turned into a cyclone might as well have been a death sentence. Who would ever make such a deal if they knew the consequences from the start? Which means Kuma was forced into it against his will, or he only agreed to it to save something, which could have been Bonnie, could be his kingdom, could be a mixture, could be something else. And Bonnie is adamant that her father was never a tyrant, and that, sh that he hated the world government, and that he would have never done this. And she also just ran drops that he was from a special people. What special people, Bonnie? What special people, Bonnie? Because <laughs> my first thought is the will of D. Like, he's a member of the will of D. Special people? There might be something else, though. But would that make her a member of the will of D as well? I don't know. But I have a feeling we're about to get a lot of Kuma lore. We're about to get a lot of Bonnie lore. Blah, 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 their backstories and everything. And with everything we've seen from Kuma, as much as I'm attached to Kuma already because of everything that he's been through, everything he's suffered through from what we've seen, I'm not prepared. I, I'm i not sure what else Oda can do. <laughs> but I'm scared. But I know we're gonna, like, the way this is all building up, all the different pacifistas coming back around, everything, you know, the new pacifistas with the Seraphim, and then, you know, Vegapunk wanting being a target, and Dragon having the real Kuma pacifista guy. Kuma's been front and center now. So is Bon. Bonnie is kind of coming into front and center. Which means they're about to get a lot of focus. <sighs> I'm little nervous. We don't get it immediately, of course. Of course. We get Frankie and the others, they arrive on Egghead as well. They get all their new outfits and uh, Lilith leads them to the lab where they kind of like just go through it because it's the hologram I guess. It's one of the hologram ones. You can just go through it. And they did mention that, oops, they did mention that the floor of Egghead the same from the Sky Island. And knowing what I know, that gives a little bit more, um, maybe a bit more lore to Skypea as well. Because this place is not a place from the future, it's a place from the past. Before I get there, <laughs> when they walk into the lab, it is a trap because they're wanting to test the kid version of Jinbei, and I, or actually, okay, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. They also talk about how they're wanting to create their own sun, have, like, fire as their source of energy. They want to create their own sun. <laughs> they want to create their own sun. The sun god Nika has just come back. This place is from 900 years in the past. The land itself is what was on the sky island which has been in the sky for many, many, many years, and the people of the Sky Island pray to the sun god. i just say, it's, it's not a coincidence. It's not coincidental that these things are being said and put into place. I... 
I just had to say that. Just had to say that. But yes, they see the Lunarian child version of Jinbei, who actually does have wings and fire coming off his back. They fight against Jinbei because Jinbei ends up attacking them and grabbing Nami by the throat. Sanji immediately attacks him, sends him flying, and Robin ends up attacking right after saying, no, you're not getting away with this. They all end up attacking and going against this Seraphim Jinbei until another version of the Dr. Vegapunk is like, okay, well, that's enough. Because there, it's just experiment. There's so much data together because they've never had a fight like this. This is perfect. Until the another one's like, okay, that's enough. Like, you're done. Shaka, the one who told them to come. And that is when he tells them, oh, this is a place from the past. And then we get this dual perspective of Shaka telling them the egghead isn't the only place from the past that has technology as advanced like this as Luffy and Jinbei and Bonnie and Chopper come across this solid metal thing this guy saying there was once a kingdom just as highly advanced as this that existed 900 years ago and Luffy and them are staring at this thing for 900 years. We are about to get Kingdom Lore, the from from when it was first introduced her on Ohara. We're finally getting Kingdom Lore. I was done after that. My brain had enough after that. I had to stop. We're gonna be getting answers soon. Finally. Finally, finally, we're going to be getting answers. I say soon as in like a relative soon, but soon. It's coming together. That's where I have stuck into just the, that acknowledgement that the high advancement technology from the game that kind of supports some of my earlier theories. And now I have to go back and check my theories and kind of rework them see how well they align with the information we have now. Oh! <laughs> I don't know what to do. There's so much information. There's so much happening. The These eight chapters were just jam-packed. Like, so much happened. I don't know where to go from here. There's just, there's just so much is happening, and I don't know what to do with myself. But, um, that's the review. <sighs> That's all I got. <laughs> um, my brain is fried. I'm shook. Oda is working his magic as always. There's a lot of things being put into motion. There's a lot of things happening. I'm scared for Law. I'm scared for Sabo. I'm curious to see what is going to happen on Egghead. I'm not prepared for any backstory we get for Kuma or Bonnie. I don't think I'm prepared for something like that because of what we know of Kuma from the present, um, I will gladly learn anything about the kingdom and the lore of said kingdom. That's all for this video. It's just so much to process. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you haven't watched my video over Sanji and Queen's fight, I posted that on Tuesday. Be sure you go check that one out. That one was a fun video to do. Be on the lookout next week. I'm going to be doing a fight from Zoro and King. I'm going to be covering their fights. Make sure to check that out next week. Next week, next Thursday, I will also be putting together a video for my theories regarding Joy Boy, what the return of Joy Boy means. Um, I've already spent several hours on that video or on my ideas for that video and I still have several more to do. So be on the lookout for that video. That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a fun one. Make sure you check that, that video out. That'll all be coming out next week. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time, scholars. Bye!